The malonic ester synthesis employs the reactivity of the alpha carbon in the preparation of mono or disubstituted acetic acid derivatives. The reaction is named for the substrate, which is a diester formed from malonic acid. The preparation of mono-substituted acetic acid derivatives is a three-step process involving formation of the enolate using base, alkylation, and finally hydrolysis and decarboxylation. The net result is the installation of a substituent at the alpha carbon of acetic acid. The synthesis of disubstituted acetic acid derivatives is quite similar. It simply incorporates an additional round of deprotonation and alkylation. The net result is the installation of two substituents on the alpha carbon of acetic acid. Let's examine the mechanism for the formation of monosubstituted acetic acid derivatives first. The alpha position of malonic ester is adjacent to two ester carbonyls, which renders it fairly acidic. It has a pKa value of about 13. Consequently, it can be readily deprotonated to yield an enolate. In the next step of the reaction, an electrophile, such as an alkyl halide, is added to achieve alpha alkylation. And there's more detail on alpha alkylation in the preceding video on that very topic. The enolate attacks the unhindered electrophilic carbon bearing the leaving group and displaces the halide in the process. Notice that a new carbon-carbon bond has been formed. Since the critical new carbon-carbon bond has now been installed, one of the two ester groups can be removed. The malonic ester starting material was chosen because of its doubly activated alpha position, which made deprotonation facile under mild conditions. Now that the second activating group has served its purpose, it can be dispensed with. This happens upon heating in aqueous acid. The esters are first hydrolyzed to the corresponding carboxylic acids, and a full mechanism for this process is available in the video on the nucleophilic acyl substitution of esters. Decarboxylation then follows at the elevated temperatures used for this step. The proton of one carboxylic acid can participate in six-membered hydrogen bonding with the carbonyl oxygen of the other carboxylic acid. As the hydrogen bond becomes stronger, the carbonyl pi electrons can be used to remove the carboxylic acid proton. This frees the hydrogen-oxygen sigma bonding electrons, which collapse between oxygen and carbon, to form the second pi bond of carbon dioxide. Finally, the carbon-carbon bond tethering the carboxyl group to the molecule breaks, and this yields the enol form of a carboxylic acid. That enol spontaneously tautomerizes through protonation at the alpha center and loss of a hydroxyl proton. The final monosubstituted acetic acid derivative is thus obtained. The preparation of disubstituted acetic acid derivatives follows the same pattern. The reaction begins with the formation of an enolate. This occurs when the malonic ester is deprotonated at its doubly activated alpha position. Alkylation follows just as before. The enolate attacks the unhindered electrophilic carbon 
displacing the leaving group and installing a new carbon-carbon bond. One proton remains on the alpha carbon after the first alkylation. Additionally, the acidity of this position remains high because both activating carbonyls are still present. Therefore, if desired, the remaining alpha proton can be removed so as to form another enolate. This enolate can then be alkylated using another alkyl halide. The attack occurs at the unhindered electrophilic carbon and a leaving group is displaced. A second carbon-carbon bond has been installed in the process. Finally, the end game of the synthesis is the same as before. The esters are both hydrolyzed in aqueous acid. And at elevated temperatures, the dye acid then spontaneously decarboxylates. This releases carbon dioxide and affords the product in its enol form. Spontaneous tautomerization yields the dye-substituted acetic acid derivative. Let's turn our attention to a couple of specific examples. In the example below, diethylmalonate is converted to 3-phenyl propanoic acid through sequential treatment with ethoxide, benzyl bromide, and aqueous acid. Since the alpha position of diethylmalonate is doubly activated, giving it a pKa of approximately 13, it is acidic enough to be efficiently deprotonated by ethoxide whose conjugate acid, ethanol, has a pKa of about 16. Notice that the alkoxide was chosen so that its alkyl group matches those of the esters. This prevents transesterification from becoming a complicating factor. The resultant enolate can be alkylated by an unhindered alkyl halide. This step is an SN2 reaction in which the enolate acts as a nucleophile and attacks benzyl bromide so as to displace bromide. Since it is an SN2 reaction, the alkyl halide must be unhindered. The two ethyl esters can now be hydrolyzed to form the diacid. And this diacid subsequently decarboxylates through the exchange of one carboxylic acid proton, the formation of the second pi bond of carbon dioxide, and the cleavage of a carbon-carbon bond. The resultant enol tautomerizes to afford the product, 3-phenyl propanoic acid. It's important to step back and appreciate the overall strategy behind the malonic ester synthesis. This synthesis allows us to generate acetic acid derivatives that we could not easily make from acetic acid itself. A direct synthesis from acetic acid suffers from two fatal flaws. First, the most acidic proton of acetic acid is the carboxylic acid proton, not the proton at the alpha position. Secondly, once the carboxylate is formed through deprotonation of the carboxylic acid, it would be very difficult to deprotonate the same molecule a second time at the alpha position. The malonic ester synthesis circumvents these two problems by masking the acid as an ester and by adding a removable second activating group to enhance the acidity of the alpha center. In the next example, diethylmalonate is used to prepare 2-methyl-3-phenyl propanoic acid. 
This synthesis requires two rounds of alkylation prior to hydrolysis and decarboxylation. As expected, the reaction begins with enolate formation. The first alkylation employs benzyl bromide, just as in the last example. Since an alpha proton remains after the first alkylation, it can now be removed to afford a new enolate. And the alkylation of this enolate with bromomethane installs a methyl group on the alpha carbon. It's worth noting that the order of the two alkylation events does not matter. Interchanging our second and fourth steps would result in the same doubly alkylated product. The diester is now hydrolyzed to yield the diacid. And decarboxylation follows, releasing carbon dioxide and producing the product in its enol form. Finally, tautomerization of the enol yields 2-methyl-3-phenyl propanoic acid. In summary, the malonic ester synthesis provides access to mono or di-substituted acetic acid derivatives. These compounds would be difficult to access through direct alkylation of acetic acid. However, the use of a malonic ester masks the problematic carboxylic acid and allows for mild deprotonation conditions due to the second carboxyl group that enhances the acidity of the alpha position. The reaction has a few stages. It begins with enolate formation and alkylation, which are the two steps of alpha alkylation. And you can refer to the previous video to review alpha alkylation in more detail. If a dye substituted product is desired, these two steps can simply be repeated. After alpha alkylation is complete, heating with aqueous acid results in the hydrolysis of both esters and decarboxylation to afford the final product. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.